I'll, I'll see, yeah, yeah, yeah you, can, you can record me anytime. Don't okay. I, I, I have to ask. Um, so the fibers that are running up and down are rectus muscles. And again, fibers that would run transverse or across are transverse muscles. So this one's the transversus abdominis. I'll, I'll show you that one next week. This one would be an example of the rectus abdominis. Now, fibers that ran at an angle, right? Here's a good example on the abdomen. Um, right over here, you can see these fibers here are kind of running at an angle. They call these oblique fibers. So sometimes they'll call fibers that run at an angle oblique. So these are like your external abdominal obliques, your internal abdominal obliques, the fibers were running at an angle. Like I said, I'll show you that more um, next week. Sometimes they named muscles based on their location, where the, where the muscle was located. So, for instance, if a muscle was named based on its location to a bone, for instance, the frontalis muscle is one of the muscles we're going to talk about today, is located right here on your frontal bone. Where do you think your occipitalis muscle is? Back here. Where do you think your nasalis muscle is? Right here. So just by knowing that we name muscles sometimes based on their location, you know already a little bit about the muscle. Letter B. Here's an interesting thing. We know our tibia. It turns out there's two muscles on the tibia. So we can call them both tibialis. But here's the deal. One muscle is on the front of the tibia. The other one is on the back of the tibia. So we need to specify which one we're talking about. We can't just say tibialis because we won't know which one we're referring to. So the one on the front, we're going to call tibialis anterior. What are we going to call the one on the back? Posterior, tibialis posterior. Right? So they're both named tibialis because they're on the tibia. One's in the front of the leg, the other one's in the back of the leg. Okay. The other thing is sometimes we'll have a muscle you guys are familiar with the deltoid muscle out here? This, this, is, this is a picture of the arm, right? Here's the deltoid muscle right here. Sometimes uh, they'll break the muscle into parts to make it easier to, to, to learn and to, 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 to study. Um, so we could actually take the deltoid, for instance, and say, hey, you know what? This is the front of the deltoid, the anterior portion. This back here is the posterior portion. So we're taking one muscle and we're kind of just dividing it in half. Or some people even divide it into threes. We could say this is the anterior, here's the middle section, and then here's the posterior section. Right, so we could also do it that way by location. Okay? And I'll point them out as we learn these muscles. I'll, I'll tell you why they were named that way. Questions or comments on that? Size. So if a muscle was large, right, one of them we can call a maximus like the gluteus maximus that you're sitting on right now, this gluteus maximus. Uh, there's another one on the inside of our thigh, I'll point that out, it's not called maximus, it's called magnus, the adductor magnus, right? Magnus means large. When they looked at it, they're like, wow, I guess they said that, you know, wow, that's a big muscle. We'll call it magnus, okay? A small muscle, a lot of times we refer to as a minimus. Right, so you have the gluteus maximus, which is the big, broad, flat muscle out over here. Underneath it, there's a smaller, mini version of it called the minimus. It just means small. Okay? A longest muscle is a muscle that's long. If a muscle that has the same name that's called longest has a smaller version of it, 